Hi, I'm Willie, and welcome back to my channel. First of all, thank you to everyone. We are inching closer to that 10,000 mark, which means I'm going to give away a brand new in the box. I haven't even taken it out. USG3 and a US8 150 watt Unify switch. So that's coming up. We'll be releasing those details soon. So first thing after that, I wanted to let you know that Windows 10 took an update, and I see all kinds of people complaining about all the the Windows 10 update. So my Windows 10 took an update and I just realized that the mic that my recordings, the last couple of recordings have been using was not my nice mic, but it was the built-in crappy mic to the PC. So I apologize for that. Hopefully this one sounds a little bit better. And then I have a special video in between all of these other things. Um, unfortunately, even as careful as someone tries to be, occasionally your credit card number will get, will get compromised. And I am in the middle of an investigation. I am documenting it. The police department that I've been working with is allowing me to record. And then I'll be following up with a store. And so you are going to get to ride along with me for this investigation to see who done it. And uh, we'll see where it goes. And we'll talk about PCI compliance and EMV and all that stuff along the way. And it should be pretty fun. So, so far, everybody uh, has been okay with me uh, recording. I'm always up front about that when I call to see if I can get video from the store. That may be a different story. I may have to wait for the police report, but I will keep you up to date on that. And uh, that's going to be a really fun video that's going to be coming out. So what we are going to talk about tonight is logging with your Unify controller. So let's hop into that. Here you can see I have my Unify controller. It's 5.4.16, which as of the recording of this video is the most current publicly released version that's automatically pushed to your cloud key. I'm sure that will be changing soon. And then the piece of software that uh, we're going to use is going to be Syslog Watcher. And they have a free Syslog uh, piece of software for Windows. Uh, there's all kinds of Syslog tools. We're going to do some enterprise logging. This is uh, for you to get familiar with logging, get your feet wet, and see what it's all about. So you can go out, you can grab Syslog Watcher. I'm going to put the link down there in the description. So you'll be able to get that. I've already installed it. I walked through a vanilla install, and I've got the little icon down here. So we're going to go ahead and fire it up. I had to do no configuration to this at all. Now, when you do install it, the one thing that you're going to want to, to tell the install is that you do want to be able to have the GUI and manage it locally. There's a couple different options on the install. And then when it comes up each time, because I don't have it running as a service, I'm going to tell it to do standalone application. So it's just going to start this application. You can see that I have some information here from when I was playing around with this. Yes. All right. So clean slate. I literally had to do nothing to this software. Other software packages, you have to do like IP binds and all kinds of stuff. But if you go into the settings of this guy, you can see it's got storage backup, you know, where do you want to store it, email alerts, so you can do all that really powerful stuff that some of the other Windows uh, applications like Kiwi, you know, that they want to charge you for. So you can also export to a database. So the software is free and you can't beat that. It does run on Windows and it appears to have, uh, it has not given me any uh, indication that there are in, uh, a limit uh, to the amount of uh, devices that can be sending syslogs to it. So go ahead and install Syslog Watcher. Like I said, the link will be down there. And then get it fired up so you can uh, walk along with us. And we're going to go ahead and hit Collect so that this thing goes active. I've literally done no other configuration of this. So we're going to come over here to Unify. We're going to go down to Settings. Right on the Site tab, we're going to go down here to Remote Logging. We're going to enable this and the IP address of uh, my computer that the software is installed on is 66.39. So we're going to do 192.168.66.39. By default, uh, syslog messages with UDP are sent on port 514. So uh, by default, uh, that'll be gray like that, but you can't click OK. You will have to type in 514. And then um, I am going to send debug logging information so that we can see things accruing in here. Just a word of warning is that uh, depending on how many devices are going to be sending syslog information, you could get a lot of white noise that is not really important to you. And sometimes debugging can also ramp up uh, resource usage on your devices. So use this with caution. You know, if you're working with me or you're working with support or someone else who's helping you, we may tell you to turn that on. So I am going to turn it on because this is just a, a test here. 
in the lab. We're going to go ahead and apply the changes. We're going to bring up the syslog, and I told it to update every two seconds. It's going to auto scroll. So now you can see these things are automatically, so 66.208, if we hop back over to this guy, that must be the WAN interface of, yep, it's the WAN interface. So you can see that we are taking uh, log messages from that, and that's so any device that is configured via Unify will now send those log files over. You can also send SNMP traps if you're interested in SNMP. But log files, depending on how you configure your devices, um, it, it's not just a Unify thing. It's a Cisco, Juniper, Brocade, name a vendor. Syslog files are very important, uh, especially for security monitoring or even uh, just as a backup to understand what has happened when different people are logging in. It may not be anything malicious, but uh, depending on the sensitivity of your logging, the level that you've got, you know, you can collect some pretty good information and recreate events and things like that. So you can see all of this information is starting to come in. And talk about logging, it's also make sure that your clocks are right. Because if you are doing security investigations and your clock is wrong, well, then if your information, the integrity, we're questioning the integrity of the data uh, when you have a detail like time and date wrong. So, you know, make, make sure that your clocks are always set uh, here uh, in uh, Illinois, I use ntp.uiuc.edu, which is the University of Illinois Supercomputing Center. That is their uh, NTP setup, and it has been 100% reliable. And if the University of Illinois Supercomputing Program can't get it right, I don't know who can. So this has been a little bit about Syslog. You know, so play around with it. Download uh, Syslog Watcher or find your favorite Syslog program and just do it. Just hop into it uh, so you can start, you know, seeing what's going on. And you can see we're getting info, we're getting notices, we're getting errors. So there's an error down here. Um, this is, you know, can be really good information depending on what you're doing. So uh, that is it for tonight. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Please use those affiliate links that are down below. Keep a few bucks rolling into the lab. And uh, if you need assistance consulting, please contact me and we will see you in the next video.